Oh, beautiful. Let's stand together. I didn't realize that we'd be having a jazz Christmas with Gertrude's as well. But we're all going to celebrate together. Sing this together. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King. Come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Sing choirs. Sing choirs of Sing in exaltation, O oh, sing, O oh, ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God, O oh, glory in the highest. O oh, come, let us adore Him. O oh, come, let us adore Him. Adore him, oh come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Yea, would we greet thee, born this happy morning, Jesus to thee be all. Oh, Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing, oh, come, let us adore him, oh, come, let us adore him, oh, come, let us adore him. We give you all the glory. 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 Christ the Lord. For you alone.
sing. Oh, come, let us adore you. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt it. The thrill of the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a dew and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voice. Oh, night divine, oh, night, when Christ was born, oh, night divine. Truly he taught us. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break for the slave is our brother. And in his name, all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy, in grateful chorus raise we. Let all within us praise his holy name. And glory the more proclaim his power and glory the more Christ is the Lord. Christ is the Lord. Oh, praise his name forever. His power and glory.
town of Bethlehem, how still we see the light above thy deep and dreamless sleep. The silent stars go by, yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. O morning stars together proclaim the holy birth and praises sing to and peace to men on earth. How silently, how silently the wondrous love is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. Oh, holy child. Oh, holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. We thank you, Lord, that you are Emmanuel, God with us. That you come to abide in our hearts, Lord. We're so grateful, Lord, in this season that we can trust you. author and the perfecter of our faith. Lord, you know our weaknesses, Lord. You know the challenges that we face, Lord, and you faced all of those. But you overcome. And so we look to you this evening with joy and hope in our hearts, Lord, and we thank you for the goodness of our Savior. We say, we thank you, Jesus. We love you with all our hearts. All of us said together, amen. Well, please be seated. It's so wonderful having you all here today. And I'm, I'm the historian here at Mokoikawa, and I love telling the story. I'm going to ask the children if they wouldn't mind coming up and listening to the Christmas story, but um, let's sit over here. Um, we're going to hear it right from the Word of God, and I'm going to ask a couple of my friends here. Um, you know, the Bible says, let the little children come to me, and don't forbid them, because this is what the kingdom of God is made of. And years and years ago, when I had a, a daughter, and she was 12 years old, she made this beautiful drawing, and I kept it. I couldn't get rid of it. I couldn't get rid of it, but it was so beautiful. It was a, she wanted to paint a picture of Mary. I told her, paint something for the door so she could, so everyone can see it, and I kept it all these years. My daughter now went to heaven to be with Jesus, but this is the Magnificent, and I just can't get rid of this picture. <laughs> okay, thank you, kids. But if you can all be seated around here, I'm going to tell you the Christmas story from the Bible. Thank you for coming. 
Okay, this is taken from Luke chapter 2. Okay, sit down if you'd like. At that time, the Roman emperor, Augustus, he decreed that a census should be taken throughout the entire Roman Empire. Now, this was the very first census taken when Quirinius was the governor of Syria. Okay, and all of everybody returned to their home. Everybody had a home that they had to go back to be counted in the census. And because Joseph was from the house of David, well, he came and he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, which was a long way. And with him, he took his betrothed, Mary. Okay, and they went to, they were engaged to get married. And they, she was expecting a child by the Holy Spirit. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And so she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth. And she laid him in a? Great. Because there was no lodging available. They knocked at all the doors and there was no place for them to stay. Well, that night, there were shepherds, and they were staying in the fields outside of Bethlehem. And they were taking care of their, claws, uh, their flocks of sheep. And suddenly, the angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of God's glory surrounded them. It was a big, bright, blinding light. And they heard something. They heard the voice of the angel, and the angel said to them, don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good, good news of great joy. That's going to happen to all the people. Yes, for unto you is born this day a Savior. That's right. And who is the Savior? Jesus. That's right, Jesus. He's the Messiah, the Lord. And he has been born today in Bethlehem in the city of David. And they, he says, you're going to recognize him because they put the baby to sleep in a <laughs> Right, not many babies have a cradle. That's a manger, right? So that, he says, that's how you're going to know them. And suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast crowd of other angels. It looked like millions of angels were all singing in the sky. In the sky. And they were saying, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. Good peace on earth, what? Goodwill to all men, right? To everyone. That means everyone. And when the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's obey the angel and they, let's go see this thing that happened, which the Lord told us about. And so they hurried to the village and there they found Mary and Joseph. And the baby Jesus, and was he sleeping where they said? In the manger. Yeah, they was sleeping there in the manger. And so everyone, everything happened like the angel told them all about. And all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary, she kept all these wonderful secrets in her heart and remembered them forever and ever. And she kept them in her hearts. Now the shepherds went back to their flocks. But when they went back, they were glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard. It was just like the angel had told them. Did you like that story? You're going to remember the, Chris, the true Christmas story from now on, right? And you're going to tell it to your kids and your grandchildren when they grow up. Okay? Well, thank you so much for helping me. God bless you and Merry Christmas. Or as we say in Hawaii, Mele Kalikimaka. Can you say it in Hawaiian? Mele Kalikimaka. Thank you, kids. Yeah, Mele Kalikimaka. Thank you, Yolanda. At this time, I'd like to invite you to join me in prayer as we pray for our families, for our children, for our friends. I would like for us to just bring them before the Lord tonight. Of course, during, during this season, a lot of people are stricken with the loneliness. And, uh, and of course, God is here for everyone. 
And many of them need to have that uh, fresh connection with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. And we can pray for them. We can pray that the Lord, in the middle of their loneliness, will speak to them and bring them out of it. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our families. We thank you, Lord, for just your goodness to all of us. Thank you for your protection, Lord. And Lord, we just come to you with the thanksgiving in our hearts. At the same time, we recognize, Lord, that many of us have heavy hearts because of so much loss during this past year, Lord. During this year of 2021, friends and family have, uh, have gone to, to be with you, Lord, and, uh, and, we, and we miss them. And so tonight, we want to give them to you. Tonight, we, we want to thank you for them. Tonight, we want to pray, Lord, for those who uh, have broken relationships and they need to be reconnected to you and to, to each other. So we ask you that you bless them and that you bring them into reconciliation. Whatever forgiveness needs to take place, let it take place. Whatever repentance needs to happen, let that happen. But Lord, we just uh, thank you that you can move upon their hearts. So we bless them, Lord. We bless our children, that especially those who don't know you, that they come to know you as Lord and Savior. So we give them to you tonight in Jesus' name. And as Jesus taught us how to pray, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I've always loved candlelight on Christmas Eve, banishing shadows with the tiniest light. One of the brightest lights I've ever known is Hosani, my wife's mother. In November, she lost her job because she was medically unable to get a vaccine. Losing her pay and insurance with a scheduled breast cancer surgery in December would have been dark enough to discourage most. Instead, Hosani began praying and packing. She packed up a big Christmas care package to send us, this box. Though we told her to save her money that she so desperately needed, she hid money in a soap wrapper and sent it with her gifts to make sure we would have a good Christmas. Her giving dispelled the darkness of what appeared hopeless. On December 4th, my wife and my anniversary, we expected a call from Hosani, but instead we heard the tragic news. A home invasion had happened. My wife's dad was in the hospital, stabbed, and her mom, Hosani, had been killed. Sorrow and questions still come in waves. But since that time, we've been overwhelmed with aloha from our family, church, and friends that have given, cooked, helped, prayed, and listened. Despite the injustice of this murder, we've experienced God's healing and giving us grace to forgive. We do not stand in shadows of despair. In the light of hope, we stand. And we invite you all to help remember Hosani, remember her faith, to remember the true meaning of Christmas giving. Take this time to give and help others, if you like, through the church's benevolence fund. Like Hosani wanted for us, we want the hurting people of this community to find help and hope. Thank you for joining us in making this a Merry Christmas and in a way, a Hosani Christmas. Hello, hi everyone. Our family here tonight, we would like to invite you 
to join us, that we could give in this same way as the story of, of my mother-in-law, of my wife's mother, that just as she gave so generously and sacrificially, could we give together? Could we step out to do something to change the situation when someone comes in home, hopeless or in, in some type of challenge that we could have funds in the Benevolence Fund here at Mokuaikawa to be able to respond immediately and to bring light and hope and joy in circumstances that are just not so. So if you'd like to, we have a, a place here where you can give an offering underneath the arch here and on the screen you'll see how you can give online. And we, we're so grateful that you would join us in making this a Hosanna Christmas and a very Merry Christmas. In Jesus' name, God bless you. worship to you. We bring our adoration to you. We ask, Lord, that you would use these gifts to touch so many in this community. We know there's so many broken, so many needy in this place, and we know that each one of them is near and dear to your heart. And so we pray, Lord, that you would multiply these gifts to touch those broken in this community, and that this would become a place of healing, a place of restoration in Kona, in Jesus' name. And we love you with all our hearts. Amen. Tonight, I'd like to talk about the Jesus, God's gift to sinners, you and me. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but to have eternal life. Jesus is the full expression of God's love for you and me. Jesus epitomizes the agape, God's love. Jesus came to demonstrate 
God's love for us, his unselfish, unlimited, unconditional love, his agape love. Let's pray and just ask the Lord to speak to us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. And now we ask you, would you give us ears to hear, Lord, eyes to see, and would you bring fresh revelation to our hearts? We pray that you help us, Lord, to this, uh, through this message, Lord, that we receive everything that you have for us in Jesus' name. His love for us, it is unselfish, willing to put the needs of us or wishes of others before one's own. His love is always looking for our best interests and for the greater good. God created us to have a close relationship with us. When he created us, his desire was to be our father and to always be there to take care of us. But we reject him. We reject his love and his presence. But our Heavenly Father knows us well. He knows that we, we were lied to. We were being deceived. So he sent Jesus to help us. Giving Jesus and punishing him for the sins of the world, it was not an a easy thing. It was a major sacrifice. He reached out to those who rejected him those who refuse his love, it was for our benefit only. He loved us so much that he sent Jesus to take our place on the, on the cross. Jesus told this parable during the time that he was here on earth. In uh, Luke 18, uh, beginning of verse 10, he said that two men went into the temple enclosure to pray, one a Pharisee, and the other one a tax collector. The Pharisee stood ostentatiously and began praying to himself in a self-righteous way, saying, God, I thank you that I'm not like the rest of men, swindlers, unjust, dishonest, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I pay tithes, of all that I get. But the tax collector standing at a distance would not even raise his eyes towards heaven. But he was striking his chest in humility and repentance, saying, God, be merciful and gracious to me, the especially wicked sinner that I am. I tell you, this man went to his home justified, forgiven of the guilt of sin and place in right standing with God rather than the other man. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself, forsaking self-righteousness, pride, self-righteous pride, will be exalted. God Love is always there for us. We will find it when we come to him in humility. Our, friend, our family just lost a dear friend in the last few days. And he prayed for the salvation of his dad. For over 30 years. He forgave his dad for, for the dad's short, shortcomings, and he loved him unselfishly. He was a great son. Uh, about three weeks ago, he had a heart attack, and just the day before he passed away, his dad gave his life to the Lord. Our unselfish love is, is the only way to create an opportunity for someone to meet Jesus. Jesus' love is also unlimited. Psalms 103, 8 through 12 says this, The Lord is compassionate 
and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. He will not uh, always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. There is no limit on God's love and forgiveness for us. His love is always over and always is all over us, is always with us, and he's patient and kind. He will forgive us as many times as we go to him. Some years ago, I was uh, teaching uh, just uh, on, on the Andes and the mountains there of Venezuela in a, in a little town called Merida. And, uh, and I was surprised because one day in the afternoon, somebody knocked on the door of my room and says, you know, uh, somebody downstairs that would like to meet you and, and would like to talk to you. And so, of course, I got ready, went down. And I got there, I saw this lady that I'd never seen before. And, uh, and I was surprised because who, who knew that I was in Merida or in Venezuela? And, uh, and who, why would she want to talk to me? And so I went down and I met this lady. And of course, uh, she said, you know, I, I drove a few hours. I know that from Caracas to Merida is about nine hours. So she said, I, I drove a few hours to get here, but I said, I really needed to talk to you. So I was curious. So she began to share about how her life went in the last uh, several years. And she told me about how disappointed she was with her father, how painful that a relationship had been, and how much she uh, really needed to resolve that. Now, of course, you know, with the years of uh, bitterness and, and, and the relationship that she had, she had become just like her dad. She had done many wrong things, destroyed her own family. But here she was, and she said, I, I, I talked to someone from Brazil, a friend, and she said, you know, they asked me to come and see you, and that's why I'm here. So we... I, I, I was traveling with a friend, and so we, we took time, and we prayed with her. And, of course, the Lord set her free, and she was able to forgive and be free from that bitterness in, in her heart. Her question to me was, can I be forgiven for all the bad things I have done? And can I be free from the bitterness that I have in my heart? And of course, my answer to her back then and to you today is, yes, you can. Yes, you can. God can set you free if you come and humble yourself before him. Romans 5.20 says this, the law was brought in, uh, it was brought in so that the trespasses might increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So that just as sins reign in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The unlimited, unmerited favor of God superabounds. Our sin may be grievous, may have not only defiled us or, or the people around us, may have created suffering to many others, but God's love and forgiveness goes beyond anything that you have done. So there is no limit. He will forgive you as you come to him. The love of God has no limit. His love is also unconditional. 
not to subject to any conditions or unreserved. It does not require anything. God always loves you. Some of our forefathers, uh, they couldn't understand God's love. They saw him as holy. They saw him as the all-powerful creator of the universe. But they couldn't see him as a loving father. We live in an imperfect world by man's choice. Sin came into the world and separated us from our loving heavenly father. Ever since we live with imperfections, there are no perfect or good in this world. We are all sinners, and those who are saved are saved by grace. It's very easy for us to make a list of people who deserve and don't deserve our love, or at least our tolerance. God gave each one of us a family, and we're supposed to love them, but for them, sometimes they, they cross their family too. Their family doesn't make that list, and so they reject them. For some others, their list is so short that they don't even make into their own list. They reject themselves. Many become judgmental and critical and very often all alone. So God knew that we needed help. So he sent his son, Jesus, into the world to demonstrate his love, his justice against evil and sin, and his commitment to you and me. Jesus came to correct, correct any wrong theology about his heavenly father and how we are to see each other. 1 John 4, 9 and 10 says this, in this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. I'm certain that someone somewhere with all their imperfections, have shown to you the love of God, the agape love of God. I'm here today because I had an imperfect mother who chose to love. She refused to give up on me, so she prayed for me. As a teenager, I was not nice, but she's stuck with me, she prayed for me, and believed that God could change my heart. So the love of God, it reached me, not only me. But my entire family. Jesus is God's gift to sinners, you and me. John 13, 34 says, I'm giving you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. So you too are to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love and unselfish concern for one another. So remember how Jesus loved you. Go and love others the same, the same way. He demonstrates God's love to us. It is unselfish, unlimited, unconditional love. To receive Jesus, we need to accept him as God's son. We need to repent from our sins and a life of selfishness. We need to ask him to be our Lord and Savior. Not that we deserve it, but it is a gift from God. If this is your desire tonight, please repeat this simple prayer after me. Your Heavenly Father knows you well. He knows exactly what you're thinking right now. So if you pray, he will answer you. 
He will listen to your prayer. Let's do it together so nobody is repeating by themselves. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. And I'm sorry for my sins. I'm willing to turn away from my sins. I receive Christ as my Savior. I confess Him as Lord. And from this moment on, I want to follow and serve Him in the fellowship of His church. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let me see what comes next. <laughs> Just over 200 years ago, there was a group of missionaries in 1819 gathered in Boston preparing to come to Hawaii to take the gospel. And at the same time, halfway around the world was a small church in Austria with a pastor who happens to be my five times great uncle, Joseph Moore. And he wrote a song that has become one of the most famous songs in Christmas history, Silent Night. And I just think of the anticipation that these missionaries had in 1819 as they were preparing to come and that those believers must have had in Austria as they were preparing to celebrate Christmas. And this small congregation looking for a song to sing to celebrate his birth. And Joseph Moore was the pastor and he put to pen these lyrics that have become known as this song, Silent Night. And he took the song to his musician, Franz Gruber, and he put the melody together for this song that now has been sung around the world. And I would imagine that it wasn't too long after that that Silent Night was sung here in Hawaii. stand together. Kahu David's going to begin to light candles and the light will begin to spread and you can light those around you. It's a beautiful display, the glory of Jesus spreading from just a few. So we love you, Jesus. Oh. 
Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of us. Amen. Emauaku kaloko maikai o kahaku Yesu Christo. Meke aloha akeakua. Ame kalana puana mai o kauhani emolele yaulua. Ame mako apao. Ameni. May the Lord bless you. Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful, wonderful celebration in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Amen.